Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be somewhat of an informative like helpful tips video as you may see by the title. So recently I just moved. Um, if you have not checked out my empty apartment tour, check it out. I'll link it above and then put it in the description box. So please check out that video. So some of you may know and some of you may not know that I was living in Memphis Tennessee and I moved to Nashville which is three hours away so I thought it would be helpful for me to put out a video with some of my tips and tricks on making a long distance move so tip number one would be doing your research you don't want to move to a city that you've never visited don't know anything about it's not to say that you won't have a successful move if you do so but I think that you will find that it will be a little bit more wise for you to visit that city or research that city before you make a move. So for example, um, you want to find out what the city has to offer and see if that matches up with what your goals are. So if you're looking for a nightlife and you're looking for things and um, for young people to do um, growth with that, then you may want to check out a city like Atlanta. Atlanta has a lot of nightlife um, things for young adults to do. So that type of city may match up with your goals. So after you have done your research on the city and you've located what city matches up with your goals, your next thing that you will want to do is research jobs in that area. So we're going to, since I moved to Nashville, I'll use Nashville as an example. Nashville has a lot of growth right now. It's the, one of the one of the fastest growing cities in the South right now. So with that, it comes comes a lot of opportunity. So right now, Nashville has a ton of opportunity to offer, and that's one of the reasons why I chose to move here. And I just researched the abundance of jobs. I wanted to know did they have a, or are they lacking jobs or was there abundance of jobs? Were there just enough jobs? Are people fighting for the jobs? So you kind of want to research the jobs, what kind of jobs um, are popular in the area, what they're typically paying, and how does that pay match up with the cost of living? So for example, cost of living. I know a lot of times people are are intimidated by the cost of living in cities like LA and New York but it's really nothing to be that intimidated by because with that cost of living comes higher paying jobs so if you really equal it out what you're paying what you're making in Memphis and what you're paying for rent in Memphis will almost equal out to what you'll be making in um, New York or Nashville and what you'll be paying in cost of living. So you want to research that. You don't want to go to a, a area where the cost of living is sky high but the jobs are not offering at least competitive pay. So this third tip that I have for moving to another city is optional because everybody is not as fortunate to have this but it's awesome if you have a point of contact in the city. It could be a family member, a friend, a um, a church member anybody pretty much if you have some sort of point of contact in that city it will make it that much easier for you to move because when you're there visiting the city like my number one tip because you're going to want to visit that city quite often so research and visit 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 and visit till you can't visit anymore um well don't do too much visiting because you don't want to spend all your money visiting the city and you'll never be able to make it to the city so, like i said number three if you have a point of contact in that area that is awesome that's going to give you two steps ahead of anyone else who does not have a point of contact so for example with my move to nashville my husband had a best friend that lived here already so when we came to visit the city, we were able to cut costs on hotel stays and things like that because we had a point of contact who house we could stay at and we could crash there. We could ask them for areas that are good, bad, where to, where to go, where not to go. They could show us around a little bit. So it's really, really good if you have a point of contact in the city. So after you have researched and visited the city, looked into the jobs and you know had you contacted your person your point of contact 
you will want to start making plans to make that move. If that's the decision that you want to do and you're sure you want to make the move, you need to start saving. You will need to save. You will. You will need to save. So you may want to have about $2,000 cushion to move to a different city, depending how far it is. That's give or take. Some people's situation may require less. Some people's situation may require more. But just a random number, I would throw out you want to have at least about a $2,000 cushion because it can be expensive to move to a different city. So once you've gotten your money saved, you want to start making the actual move. What you need to do is start looking for a job. You want to, number one, secure the bag. You need to secure a job. So it's really not that logical to move to a city with no job unless it's you and a spouse and maybe the spouse have a job but you don't you don't have a job just yet but it's not really logical for you to move to a city with no job at all unless you have like a big cushion you need a big savings cushion girl because if you're going to be moving to another city with no money it's just ain't wise unless you have a big savings so number two, once you've had a job, you got that out the way, you good, you can go ahead and start looking for a place to live. So it's logical to try to find a place to live within the area where you'll be working, especially if you're moving to a city like what I moved to. Um, Nashville, like I said back in the beginning, is a really fast growing city, so the traffic is terrible. Cities like Nashville, Atlanta, LA, Probably New York, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people drive in New York, I'm not sure. But any bigger cities, the traffic is terrible. You don't want to have to wake up an hour to two hours early to get to work on time. So for, for example, if you live in the downtown area, then it'll be wise for you to work in the downtown area. Or if you, or you know, vice versa, if you're going to be working in the downtown area, you may want to try to find living conditions in the downtown area. Another tip I have when looking for an apartment, it is wise for you to visit that apartment. So when I said it um, before to visit that city, visit, 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 visit as much as you can. That's what I was meaning because you never know. You may have to visit to view apartments, visit to do a final view of your apartment, visit to do interviews for the job. So you want to be able to visit this city. That's why it was easiest for me to make this three hour move instead of making a 12 hour move because I was able to hop in my car by myself and drive back and forth to Nashville from Memphis or Memphis to Nashville. So when you're trying to pick your apartment, it's wise to look for apartments that offer um, online payments, offer virtual tours, things like that. Although I don't recommend you going um, solely off of a virtual tour, it's very convenient for you to have that so that you don't have to drive there to put your deposit down, drive back home. That's just helpful. Find an apartment complex that allows you to do everything online. So after you have your job, you have your place to stay, you're pretty much ready to move. So now you need to locate like a U-Haul service or movers or however you're going to get your things from this one city to the next you need to start looking into that booking a date and start um, you know comparing prices to understand what it is that it's going to cost you to move there so with movers it could be more expensive than getting a moving truck and loading it and unloading it yourself so that is just at your discretion. You can decide if you're balling and you want movers or if you want to be a little more cost efficient and get like a U-Haul, that's up to you. For example, for me, my U-Haul ran me about four, $400. So I was moving in a three hour, a three hour um, distance. So my truck cost me about 400 you could be moving a 12 hour distance and it could cost you 800. I'm not really sure, but that's the research that you will want to do. So now let's just do one recap of what you need to do to move from one city to the next. So you want to research the city. You want to visit the city. You want to research jobs in the area. 
You want to have a point of contact if possible. And you want to start making your plans to move, which includes securing the bag, securing a job, securing a place to stay, and looking into U-Hauls and moving services. After that, you're ready for your big move. And it really isn't that bad. Like, I've been planning to move to this city for maybe two years and I just kept, you know, putting it off. I'm very happy that we decided to move here. I'm proud to have left my hometown because um, I just always wanted to be able to say that I tried something different. I lived somewhere different. I don't want to be so complacent to where I just stayed where I live and never try to live anywhere else. Um, there's 50 states, 51 if you want to say, and I want to travel and try to live in all of them if, if possible, if I'm fortunate enough. So that's my best tips. I hope this helps someone. I hope you guys subscribe, hit the bell for notifications to know when I'm going to upload videos and I will see you guys in my next video.